Hello, my name is Emily Merriam, and I'm a product engineer that specializes in cartography with the Living Atlas Environment team. Now, in case some of you aren't familiar with Living Atlas, the Living Atlas is a trustworthy source for layers, maps, and apps that are contributed by the GIS community and are enabling a global web-based GIS. What's new? Well, we are building a collection of analyzed layers from high resolution US and global climate models and are also summarizing them into zones that can be enriched with population data. New additions like World Climb and NASA's iMERGE, which you see animated here, provide updated global precipitation estimates. In the US, there are new layers for the US Drought Monitor and NOAA's urban heat mapping campaign. Storm reports have been updated with more unique storm identifiers and stream gauges have been expanded to include new networks from our community map contributors. In the ocean, Sustainable Development Goal 14.1's monthly reporting on coastal eutrophication has been automated. And you've already heard about the ecological marine unit updates and the release of ecological coastal units. What's new with our partners? There have been several contributions recently from the US Forest Service with a series of 15 new layers that are available to help map and analyze community wildfire risk. There are also new layers from the National Geographic's Pristine Seas Project that show numerical rankings of the global ocean to prioritize conservation activities for biodiversity, food, and carbon. NOAA has added two fire and smoke layers, which are identified through their hazard mapping system. Both of these go through quality control procedures that is performed using both machine and analyst-based data screening. What's coming? There's so much great content being worked on within Esri and in our partner network. So stay tuned as these make their way into the Living Atlas collection. Let's jump right into showcasing a few different maps and apps. All right, I'll start with the High Tide Flooding app, which is a visualization and data access utility created by Esri, where you can explore nuisance flooding projections through 2100 and different scenarios across the United States. Nuisance flooding projections are an invaluable resource made available by NOAA Co-ops. This information can help coastal planners better understand potential flooding impacts and identify locations at risk. Next, Esri's Drought Aware app provides an interactive experience to examine past, present, and future drought conditions for the U.S., along with potential impacts to population and agriculture. You can click on a county or a state and get the latest information. As well, click through the time series to see the past drought conditions. The app uses data from NOAA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the U.S. Census. Another recent addition to Living Atlas is the PAD Tracker from Conservation International, and this includes validated data on protected area downgrading, downsizing, and degazettement events. PAD tracks the legal changes that ease restrictions on the use of a protected area, shrink a protected area's boundaries, or eliminates legal protections entirely. They have documented more than 3,000 enacted cases of PAD in nearly 70 countries for a total area of more than 130 million hectares. Also shown on this map is the World Database of Protected Areas and is also available in Living Atlas. There are also new maps from the First Street Foundation, a nonprofit research and technology group that has a nationwide flood model called Flood Factor which shows any location's risk of flooding from rain, rivers, tides, and storm surge. It forecasts how flood risks will change over time due to changes in the environment. The pop-ups have detailed information by county, state, congressional district, and zip code. One of the things I love in the map viewer are the blend modes. Let's add from Living Atlas the world population density estimates so that we can use it to highlight only those areas within the polygon where people actually live. The blend mode destination atop will allow the flood layer to be drawn only where it overlaps with the population layer. So now, instead of using polygons, you get a clear picture of where people are actually living with just a few clicks. I hope you've enjoyed the latest and greatest from Living Atlas, and thank you very much.